A free trade deal with the UK will take effect from today. Under the new agreement, working holiday visa holders will be able to stay longer and farm work will no longer be a requirement for UK nationals in Australia. Additionally, tariffs will be removed on more than 99% of Australian exports, including alcohol, seafood and car parts. The removal of the import tax is expected to save Australian households around $200 million a year. There are concerns from some British farmers the deal could leave them vulnerable to being undercut by cheaper Australian products. John Meat live now as a Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs, Simon Birmingham, also from Adelaide. I called it a town, but it's a beautiful city. Yep. Uh, who would you be going for if you were in Adelaide tonight. Well, Adelaide's good neutral territory for the state of <laughs> okay. origin, no doubt there. Very it does diplomatic. events like, uh, like none other. But look, you know, I, I like to do a bit of sparring with my leader sometimes. So why don't I say come on the blues so Dutz okay. and I have got something to... Uh, That's to a great idea. Oh, I love that. Well, let's uh, talk free trade. We've now seen this, something you started, and uh, now it's been uh, completed. I mean, uh, we always talk about free trade agreements as being, you know, good for everyone. But have we got the better end of the deal here? Well, there's a great opportunity for Australia, no doubt about that. Uh, we used to have the UK as a top 10 trading partner before they entered the EU and their economic and trade circumstances changed dramatically. And at that stage, they then had free trade with Europe and high tariffs and quotas in place in terms of arrangements with Australia. That's now changed uh, and this is a good deal and a great opportunity for Australia to surge back in, having the UK as one of our larger trading partners building that up. And mm. this is one of the last two trade deals signed off under the coalition, uh, the India and UK deals, which together with the Asian ones, the Trans-Pacific Partnership and others, you know, drove Australia's uh, trade performance from one where only around 27% uh, of our trade entered other markets under preferential terms. Now close to 90% of Australian mm. trade enters other markets under preferential it, terms. It's, it's a big legacy achievement of the coalition. Yeah, it's, it's great news indeed. And this is, you know, one area where we often have bipartisanship. But it's cold comfort at the moment, isn't it? Just look at the economic circumstances. Cost of living is hurting. Uh, and the Treasury Secretary yesterday said, basically, it's all downhill from here. Uh, we could be entering recession territory. We've got the RBA governor before Senate estimates this morning uh, saying productivity is low. Good governments are born out of strong oppositions. So I ask you in that context of what you're doing at the moment. Well, Laura, you know, we've been very clear in terms of trying to hold the government to account around their budget and the framing they've taken as to whether it is making a bad problem worse uh, or whether they are actually tackling it. And I think what we can see from the analysis following the budget is that the Reserve Bank is being left to do all of the heavy lifting uh, that indeed the governor is appearing today before Senate estimates He's admitting very clearly that he has to do the hard yards in terms of tackling and slaying the inflation beast, and the Reserve Bank is continuing to do that through interest rates. But elsewhere, analysts have said, at best, the Albanese government's budget is neutral. Many have said it was expansionary. None have said that it actually does anything to help reduce inflation, to actually yeah. ensure that fiscal policy works in tandem with monetary policy rather than against it. It's convenient, though, to ignore that Lamito ended, and that was worth about $44 billion, I think, over the forward estimates, and the new measures a little bit less than that. So there is, you know, on that base level, less money going into welfare. So is it... What are you talking about, the structural spends here? We do see big structural spends now being baked in over the years ahead. Yeah. And they're structural spends that have been baked in uh, in areas where, of course... Many Australians, yes, are feeling it tough and doing it tough, but many more don't receive any support out of this budget. And everyone, and whether you are somebody receiving a small bit of support from the government or the many people who mm. miss out, will all face the pressure of inflation being higher for longer. And that's the consequence of a government running a more expansionary policy yeah. that is running counter to where the Reserve Bank is trying but to push But, Senator, the, the, the opposition doesn't seem to be cutting through at the moment. I mean, we had uh, Angus Taylor in uh, the House yesterday misquote inflation figures. Um, and this was apparently, according to our political editor, Andrew Clennell, after a leak out of Shadow Cabinet, after he's essentially reprimanded um, the, his fellow Shadow Cabinet ministers for not finding savings and, and essentially not doing their job. What's going on at the moment? Well, 
everybody can have the slip of a tongue and that mm. happens in this building almost every day from somewhere across all sides yeah. of politics. Uh, we have sought to have a very consistent approach in terms of the budget uh, and response to that as I just outlined before. Uh, of course we're going to have discussions around our shadow cabinet table about savings and the policies that we yeah. take to the next election is in 18 months Is there frustration within the coalition or is that just being directed from Angus Taylor to the rest of his colleagues? There's not frustration. There's a big, hard task to be done. Okay. And it's a work in progress. Uh, there were lessons to be learnt out of the last election. Opposition is never easy. And our task is to ensure that we take compelling, credible policies to the next election, still some 18 months to two years yeah. away. So when will you formulate those? Costed. They are being formulated, and that's right. an ongoing process. More will ultimately be formulated than you actually take to an election because you want to make sure you've got options to assess as you go into that campaign to suit the economic well, an circumstances honest assessment of the time. At the moment, we don't know for sure do you really, what Australia and the world will look like in 18 months' Do you think you're the, the strongest opposition at the moment that you could be? Laura, we are absolutely giving it our all, and, yes, I think we are a united team. I think we are focused in terms of the different messages that are being pursued. But there's a big, big task and there's more to be done. There's always more to be done you're in, when you're in opposition to get you back onto the government benches. And mm -hmm. our task is a huge one after the last election and I don't underestimate that at all. I've got some breaking news uh, from the House, uh, Senator. The Indigenous Voice Bill has just passed the lower house. You would be happy to see that. Have you got any message for your colleagues about how they should move forward in this debate now over the next couple of months? Be careful, being careful to make, um, yes, their points, but also how to do that in a way that doesn't divide us? So the bill will come to the Senate in the next parliamentary sitting fortnight and it will pass through the Senate. Uh, we've been clear that the Coalition wants to see this bill pass. The Liberal Party has been clear we will give yeah. the support to the government for it to pass so Australians get to have their say. And your vote, my vote, Anthony Albanese's vote, Peter Dutton's or anyone else, where they're all worth exactly the same So what you're saying value. is you don't matter so one much vote, in all of this. One vote, one value right across the whole country. Uh, and engaging with Australians, I would urge everybody to ensure we focus respectfully on the facts, that okay. uh, this is a debate uh, where I don't want to see reconciliation take a backward step because of this debate. I want to ensure it's one that is had as respectfully as possible.